We've reached a milestone. It's our 50th episode. 50th episode, and that's one year since uh, Free Range Sailing went to air. Yep. How many subscribers do we, do we have now? I think we have over 40,000 subscribers <laughs> now. So thanks for joining in. Um, yeah, in a year that's been really great. What's well, Marul's turning 49 this month? Yeah, it's Marul's birthday. Hull number 29 came off the production line in 69. So she's doing great. Um, and before we just kick off on this um, the, this episode, this this last of our trip down the coast, we want to say um, a quick thank you. Right? Yeah, we do. We really do. All right. Now, for our patrons and for people that have contributed via PayPal, just completely off your own back, as usual, we are so grateful. Um, now, listen, I know that you've all got your own reasons for... For doing what you've done and we really appreciate it but i want to tell you why we appreciate what you've gone and done um it, it's not just the money okay pascal and i we've got reasonable sort of qualifications and we could stop work um and in a few months i think we could make our cruising budget um, but we wouldn't be making free range sailing so the work that we're qualified to do if we went and uh, we went back into the workforce it would benefit well, for me, a couple of shareholders and <laughs> and uh, some very, very wealthy business owners already. And, and you, Pascal, it'd be roughly the same, just a small party of fairly wealthy people, I'd say. Yeah. 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 But by doing free-range sailing... Um, Certainly not 40,000 people anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, by doing free-range sailing, we, we feel that we're, um, we're benefiting a lot more people than what we would in the workforce. And we're sharing our knowledge... Um, and it really, it, it makes us feel good about what we're doing. Okay. Much better than if I was hanging off a, <laughs> hanging off a, a bit of mining plant or you were in a, a law office, office or yeah. something like that. <laughs> so patrons, people that have contributed, that is, that's why we're so grateful because all of our work benefits a lot more people than what we would if we did go back in the workforce. We'd make a lot more money back in the workforce, but I don't think we'd be anywhere near as satisfied, would no, you? No, no, I don't think so. I'm no. getting a lot out of this. It's yeah. been really positive, and the people that we're meeting, it, it's amazing. And people are writing in, they're saying, we watch with our kids, with our elderly parents. Yeah. I'm, I'm saving money through watching you guys. It, it, it's just a really great experience. So everyone that's contributed... Uh, thank you so much. We're upping our camera gear. We're trying to improve. We're trying yeah. to build a better channel. Um, there's a few things in the pipeline. So, oh, and and also we we get the occasional message. People like, oh, I wish I could do more to support you. You know, like, here's a couple of dollars a month or something like that. Please don't think like that. Mm. Every contribution is highly valued by us. Don't yeah. don't even start to think like that. All right, yeah. every little bit uh, it it helps. So. All right, that's that's enough. I, you know, th thank you. And um, <laughs> so, what what's happening in this episode, Pesky? Well, there's just plenty more sailing and a bit of diving and getting our heads kicked in as we head down <laughs> to Cairns. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously that's it's over now. It's in the past, but it was <laughs> character building. Do you think? I think so. Boy, oh boy. Um, yep. All right. So we're getting into Cairns and, Without um, further ado. yeah, thanks for joining us on that trip down the coast. It, it was a <laughs> hell of a trip. Okay. Today we are off to the cod hole. We anchored at Rocky Island yesterday and um, we're just going to sail up, I think about 15 nautical miles it is, a bit more, up to the top of River Reef number 10 and go for a dive there on the cod hole, which is a pretty famous dive site with lots of potato cod. So I'm pretty excited. So yeah, we'll be bringing you some nice underwater footage. But first we've got to get there. We're having fish wings for breakfast which is our favourite, as you probably know. We are doing six and a half knots. <laughs> so great. So nice not to be working to windward. <laughs> it's like a holiday. How are you feeling, Troy? Positively chipper. Positively chipper. 
there's nothing changing Except that I'm 18 Man, it really aches in my heart Looking all around me Not so much to see Just a bunch of factors playing the part upsetting there's a boat at the um, mooring the cod hole so we don't know what we're gonna do we're really upset because we've um, northed a bit to get to this spot and now we're gonna have to sail down and we might not even be able to see it so it's really frustrating so that was a bit of bad luck I don't think that moorings occupied most of the time is it uh, not most of the time, and even if they only just stayed there for an hour or two, it wouldn't matter because we timed our arrival for the bottom of the tide. That's probably what they did as well. Because you dive those reef passages that um, when the tide's flowing and you just get sucked out into the blue, it's not much fun. So we can't even wait around for them to go for that reason. Yeah. So we're just going to find our own sort of thing. And slack tide this afternoon is too late, isn't it? Too late in the day try and get a, a safe yeah. anchorage afterwards. No. Even now we should really be just heading south but I want to go for a swim now that we're here. So we may as well go check out this next patch of reef because I've never seen it. Um, sort of wallowing around in the following sea now, it's pretty horrible. trip to the cod hole because there's a another boat there and then we came and re-anchored and then it took off but then another boat showed up so um, we went for a dive here it's pretty mediocre it's showing a fair bit of cyclone damage actually from a couple of years ago it hasn't really recovered fully um, so you know you can really see that in the footage there's, there's still fish around there um, but the coral's in pretty bad nick so there we go now our best course of action is actually to come back exactly where we came from. 
Um, that will give us the best course. We should go pretty fast, five and a half, six knots. And then we're going to go past there and we're going to go on to Cape Bedford because we've got one more mild day before it goes to custard again for maybe one or two days. So that's pretty much the plan. Troy has just pulled the anchor and we didn't need to turn the engine on. We've sailed off the anchorage today and we are heading south down towards another bay and then if we've got time we'll go out to the reef. Tomorrow the winds are going to increase so we might not sail tomorrow. We might hide away somewhere and do some work. We'll see how we go. We're four days away from Cairns. Five, six. Don't jinx us. Alright. <laughs> Let's see what this weather does. Every day is a day at work now. about 25 to 30 knots out there. We're going to try and get an anchorage um, in the bay right near Cook Town. And yeah, expecting these sorts of winds for the next couple of days so we might be hiding there before we make our final long trip, 100 mile or so trip to Cairns. Well, the weather's not that great, so here we see Pascal hard at work. Yep. So dry. What are you up to, Pascal? I'm working on the last video of our Ashmore Reef little series of videos. Yep. Um, yeah, we just, it's been 25 knots today, so we decided, opted to have a rest day. Um, we'll get back out there this evening when the wind, or later tonight when the wind seems to be a lot calmer, doesn't it? The skipper quit. <laughs> stuck, stuck the bottom lip out yeah, and, and refused to go correct. out today. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yesterday was really lovely because we, when we came into this anchorage at Walker Bay after a really hard sail to weather in 25 knots, um, we met some fans, Brian and Laura, who are on the Alley Cap, and they invited us around for a drink, and then we ended up staying for dinner, so that was really lovely. We have the best fans. We do. Yeah, this is coastal sailing. <laughs>
Well, we've made it behind some of the reefs near Cairns and we've got calm conditions and we're sailing to weather and it's just such a dream because last night we tried to go outside the outer reef um, to do a big long tack into Cairns and that just wasn't going to happen. The seas were too big and the swell was too big for us to make any ground and our tacks were... What was the angle of them, Troy? <laughs> 180 degrees. Yeah. So this is this is really great after last night. Yeah, now we're in behind Undine here. I mean, we're getting a pretty reasonable 16 knots now, and our tacks are like perfect little right angles, you know. Mm. But last night, just that meter and a half sloppy sea on two meter and a half swells, one coming from either direction, it was just so Marul would just be picked up and moved two meters with each wave. Yeah, it was so, a mess. So just, uh, even though we were pointing 90 degrees, we were going properly east um, and sailing four and a half knots, even with that speed, we were still getting knocked out to like 56, 60 degrees. Yeah. So I, I was going to say the drawback of a small boat, but there, there's quite a few drawbacks, I'd say. You know, like, but um, one of them is that she's only a little four-tonner. Waves have no problem throwing her that little bit extra. Um, you could sit there on the tiller and try and, and work your way, but on autopilot, our tacks were just too broad, so yeah, we shot inside the reef, and it's it's paying off now, you know, where, where the compass says 100, and the GPS says 103. Yeah, it's so, great. And we're just poodling along at about 4.8 knots as well. Yeah. You know, it's just really comfortable. So. And now it's time for tea, which we haven't been able to have for... Yeah. 24 hours. I guess she goes to windward very well, but if the weather persists and the waves get, you know, like a metre and a half swell and a metre waves on top of that, then going to weather is very difficult in a small boat. And you, that's when you need a bigger nine, ten tonner to really just sort of crush it. But I don't know, even, though, even those guys would probably be pushed off a little bit by last night's conditions. So as we're approaching land, the wind is actually bending around. We've been able to turn the engine off first because we thought we were going to have to motor. Engine finish. So we might actually be getting the benefit of a bit of a sea breeze. So the land is actually sloping away to the southeast. And I thought, ah, oh, you know, we're going to have to zigzag down like crazy. But as we're approaching land, we're bending around to the southeast. We were coming in at 210, and now we're sailing at. Well, 187, but sometimes we've been pulling up to 172. So we're slowly coming around like this. So I don't know what the limit of it's going to be, but... And we're sailing at around about four and a half to five knots. So I thought that after all of that, that the sailing gods weren't going to let us sail into Cairns, and that would have been a bit bitter, seeing as how we've sailed the whole way. But yeah, it's really good.
made it into Cairns in the early hours of this morning. Um, we did have to motor most of the way. That sea breeze that we had, that was just a sunset thing. Once the sun was gone, the wind died and we had to switch the engine back on, which is pretty funny because we sailed the whole way and then we couldn't sail in. But that's just the way it is, I guess. And now we're house sitting for Troy's mate. He's actually just called us. He's going to pick us up. We're going to have a drink. But I've got to find my shoes. I don't, I'm not really sure where they are. Rubbish. There it is. Rubbish. So he's been taking up space. None of it's really smelly. This container's a little bit. But yeah, there's our, there's our rubbish for the six weeks of coming down the coast. Not too bad. Say goodbye to it now. Friendship ended with Halco. This Rapala lure sent to us by one of our viewers, John. Thank you, John. This is really great. That stainless really flashed. I could see that from a long way. It swam well. Because it's metal, I could actually fine tune the swimming action by bending the bib one way or the other. And this has had an encounter with a couple of solid mackerel and a shark, and look at it. That finish is just perfect. There's a, a few cracks developing. It did get a bit chomped, but it's performing really well. I took the other treble off and just put, a, put doubles there. If you leave trebles on them, they tend to scratch the sides when you leave them on the belly, so I just have them like that. Make sure you don't put them the other way, otherwise they'll hook right up like that. But that Rapala, I think it's a bit more than a Halco, but this is my new favourite lure. Look at there. We've got a bit of a bent, <laughs> bent towing eye there. All right. So it, it's put some hard work in already, but yeah, it got some good food. Oh, look at that gash there. There's actually teeth still embedded in this thing. The start of a beautiful relationship, I think. Thank you for tuning into Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. Also, we'd love to hear your feedback and questions, so head on over to the comments section and drop us a line.